Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. You gotta get it done, or you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big stack. She can fix that. Let's fix that. You have an amazing story that, that I want to start with. You started kind of off camera talking about how you became a YouTuber, sharing all of this amazing information. So share share with that. I would, I would, people would love to hear this. So what had happened was, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, so 2008 funny. is when, 2008 is when I started, started my channel. Um, okay. And, you know, I, I had, uh, I started 32 companies, uh, in 17 different industries. Um, I've actually started more companies now and I invest in companies. In fact, I'm going five o'clock tomorrow morning to San Francisco. I looked at 153 companies, uh, last month. I funded two of them. Um, so I'm actively like trying to help people. And, and that's really how it started for me yeah. is I went, you know, a, I've been a multimillionaire four times and I'm like, that doesn't interest me. Yeah. What would interest me is like somebody who's a multimillionaire that wants to make me a multimillionaire. Yeah. Like that would interest me. And at first I started YouTube kind of talking about my philosophy and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah. Wow, that's kind of gross. Like, who cares? Like, like, who I watched. Cares? Yeah, yeah. The 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 original content is like motivation. You got to do this, and you got to yeah. do that. And like, right. you already know that stuff, right? Yeah. And I, I remember when I I met my mentor. I had bought uh, Tony Robbins. I had bought like Marshall Silver. I bought all the all the people. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Nightingale was my my go to. I bought oh, yeah. everything. Let me some Earl everything. Nightingale. Yeah, <laughs> Zig Ziglar, everything. Yep. And yep. there was a guy I came across, um, Cosman, and I was 15 years old. Okay. I had all the money that I had. I saved everything, and I I like literally bought his course. Hey, and it was the best investment I ever did. And that's what I pivoted to. That changed my YouTube. It changed my perspective. It changed my purpose is I had my first patent in the patent office at 16 years old. Wow. Um, by 17, I had exclusive rights to several products. And by like 17, 18 years old, I had 200 employees, three companies, and was a multimillionaire, all because of that mentor. Yeah. And the difference is he showed me what we show people. Mm. is the strategies and the actual tactics right to to accomplish something right um and, and you know i think our channels too have they they demand that out of us yes now. they do so you have again you have a great video that that really caught my eye has over a million views on and we'll talk about another one of your videos but one of them was 13 epic 13 places to get grants and i just thought mm -hmm. that was incredible because you like listed them all out they were for real business owners you kind of went through that again that video has it was viral over a million views and what made me just like i really like this guy was that of course you said you know you gave your credibility like you did i'm a multi-millionaire i started so many businesses and then really just talked about like okay you can get loans and here's some great places to get grants so how do you kind of come up with your content and and and, and what made you want to just like tell the answer to people and not charge them for it what i think in in our in this household we've brought in a little over 480 million dollars in grant money wow um, and we did That's that in real estate after the crash yeah and um it was to help fix housing in nevada okay. and we got like after the 480 we had like an unlimited um line with the government to be able to help fix housing and okay. we started a nonprofit company to help accomplish that goal. And I, early on when I was 16, I went to um, SCORE, which was Senior Corps of Retired Executives. Mm -hmm. I learned about grants. And I, I'm, I'm like, you know, I've always, I, you know, I grew up in a, a very rough neighborhood. My dad cut me off at 12 years old. Oh, wow. um, if you could imagine me 12 break dancing, um, <laughs> you know, in a, in a tough neighborhood, uh, yeah. it, it was, it, we were, you know, impoverished. And then on top of that, I was cut off financially and had to make my own way when I was a kid. And I've always come from the viewpoint of if you're like broke and even homeless, how do you make it to the top today? And we live mm. in the best country 
in the world, yeah. in my opinion. I agree. Um, we have our differences. We're polarized. Um, right. We, we've got drama like any family. Yeah. But at the end of the day, our core infrastructure of grants, SBA, the fact that we can talk and fight about things that right. most countries would put you in jail for. Right. Um, is Kill just, you. you know, mind boggling. I would, yeah. I would leave this country, would literally leave this country if, um, if we didn't have the infrastructure we have at the SBA and yeah. didn't have grant programs. Right. I mean, we're giving grant money to, uh, like, for example, in Africa, in areas that is, if there's like literally to kids, to help fight corruption. Mm, I like, love we, that. We give money all over the world that, you know, and, and like, and it's there, you just, and my thought is it's like the lottery. People will buy a lottery ticket, but if it takes you five minutes to fill out a grant application, why wouldn't you do it? So I have, um, I go to the, the chamber of commerce here in Osceola County and they yeah. have free consultations. They do the, the, I, I've had them come do the ribbon cutting, you know, when they come with the big scissors and you know, the mayor comes out to your business when you open that up, all of that stuff is free. Or if you join the chamber of commerce, you have so many resources. So a consultant, they'll tell you about loans. They'll tell you about funding grants. They'll just give you that information for free and add to that if you're a woman of color and things like that they'll tell you about these unadvertised programs that yeah. you're not going to be able to google and look up and they'll but they just tell you them and i just I, I think that so many of us have this programming where we think there's these barriers that exist that don't yeah. oh yeah uh, even beyond barriers yeah sometimes like okay so i was buying a racetrack for 28 million dollars oh and there was um, 220 acres next to it. Mm. And I'm like, this would be a cool place to do some other stuff, like build right. some other houses and stuff. Yeah. So in the deal with the county, I'm like, what are you guys doing with the 220 acres? They're like, nothing. We blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, how about I build 200 homes over there? Ooh. And they were like, that sounds great. I said, uh, let's throw it in the deal. Wow. So 220 acres. Wow. The difference is that that land yeah. is worth maybe, I don't know, um, $1,000 an acre. Uh -huh. But if I put stuff on it, right. it'll, it'll be a million dollars an acre. Right. Right. Yeah. Depending if it's commercial it, that yeah. I put there or if I put residential. If I put commercial, it could be as much as a half a million to a million an acre. Right. And if it is, uh, you know, residential, it'll be less obviously because of like off sites and putting right. infrastructure in and all the costs associated with that. But all I did was look around and I'm, I'm like, I'm an op opportunist, right? I like, I, like I look it. for opportunity and I build a business around it. Yeah. That's been my core thing since I was a kid. Like, yeah. I don't care. That's how I've been in 17 industries. Yeah. I don't care what it is. Yeah. Um, is there an opportunity? Is there demand? Is there yeah. somebody who needs that? Yeah. Um, and then I go to it and yeah. do it. So talk to me about some of the businesses that you, you really enjoy. So obviously your channel has a lot about funding and grants and you have, you know, you used to really do a lot on real estate and obviously you're a real estate entrepreneur, sorry, opportunity, <laughs> opportunity yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah. But um, I would have considered you at one point, definitely a real estate entrepreneur. Um, and now you're just kind of um, helping all types of entrepreneurs. You know what I mean? Helping them get the funding and the, the, the grants and tax write-offs and all of these great things that entrepreneurs need. So like, what is the thing that Andrew is like, loving right now in business Ooh, my my sweet spot and literally i get so choked up and like when people reach back to me and and try and thank me like my assistant's a multimillionaire, as we just retired oh, her husband nice. and uh, they have like five kids and uh you know she's you know was there putting all the deals together and yeah. i have an unlimited warehouse line uh to do now i've got the trust of wall street Nice. So um, I'm able to do fix and flip, bridge lending, ground up construction. Nice. Um, so a lot of stuff for me is just having fun because I'm, I'm a developer. I've, I've built neighborhoods, industrial subdivisions, a couple hundred houses, the house I live in, which is about 12,000 square feet. Nice. Um, I've, I've done like just built restaurants, nightclubs, you know, all types of different product. Yeah. And to me, it, it's like, 
I like seeing people accomplish their, their dream. Like what they think is a dream yeah. is, is to me, it's easy. It's like, you want to open up an LLC? That's easy. Go to the state website. Right. You need a you know, operating agreement, download one or go to the bank. They'll have a right. five page one template that they'll give you for free, yeah. like literally. And then yeah. after that, you know, go to the IRS and you got a tax ID. You just gave birth to a company. Right. Right. Now you can take that company and you can actually go buy property that produces income. Right. And I'm like, for example, all you have to do, with, like for me, the way I've structured the term sheet is you only have to have one 110% debt coverage. That means if you pay $10,000 for, you know, taxes and, and payments and, and your cost, right. your payment, interest, taxes, and insurance, your PITI, Mm -hmm. then you only have to have 10% more than the property. So wow. all you have to do is make $11,000 to get a loan to cover $10,000 worth of a payment, interest, taxes, uh, and insurance. And the crazy thing is I'll do like up to 18 months of interest only so you can make more money off that property or even okay. a couple of years. Um, if you're doing a fix and flip, like we'll fund the property right? Mm -hmm. Depending on your credit, uh, mm -hmm. there's risk levels, right. but I'll fund 100% of the construction on the fix. And my biggest problem is educating people that they can, right. they can have yeah. what they always dreamed of. It's not, there's, there's no hack. Yeah. There's no trick. Right. There's no magic. There's right. no secret. Yeah. It's all, it's all obvious. Yeah. And like, the, check this out. Like my system, I got a really cool system. We just integrated. Okay. You take a picture of the flooring you just put in. Okay. I wire you the money in 24 hours, 24 hours from the time you put in before it, like literally I'll pay you for the flooring. I you love put it. a new kitchen in $50,000 kitchen. You take a picture of the kitchen done 24 hours later, you're going to have money. No okay. inspection. Somebody coming out there. Uh, I trust you. Just take the picture yeah. and send upload it into the system and okay. 24 hours later we just wire them you don't even have to talk to me i love it i want to make sure we put that link in the description box that link is going what's yeah. the where would people well actually I'll, I'll just put the link in the description box so just go to the description yeah. box of this video and we'll make sure that there is a link to this funding program so i love that like i said it's funny i actually I, I have would, five acres that i need to do something with um i have these acres i have the five acres like right around the corner from where i live and i live like a stone's throw from Disney. And so I live in a subdivision that's all, it's called Reunion, Florida. So it's this, there's three golf courses, seven restaurants. That was one of my dreams. I wanted to live like I'm on vacation. That was like, when I become a millionaire, you know, <laughs> hey, you're the dream. I become a millionaire. I'm going to live like I'm on vacation. And that's what I did. So I moved into this resort area and I like it. Don't get me wrong. I've been here three years now, but I bought five acres and my dream was to build like a compound. But then I was just like, then we got the one of the surveys, the feasibility survey or something done, and I can't build on all five of the acres. Um, there's some conservation, blah, blah, blah. And I should, probably should have did that before I bought the acres, but they were so cheap that I was just like, it was like maybe 60 grand for five acres. So long story short, I want to build an investment property on those acres. And I just need to do something with that to instead of just owning five acres in Kissimmee, Florida. Um, so definitely want to talk to you about that because I would love to do that. That sounds like, so what, what was like your first project of I'm, new I'm builds? I'm already in it. I'm like, okay, how far are the utilities <laughs> away? Uh, you know, wh wh what side is the, uh, the conservation on? And, yes, and also I have all of that. Cause I had to do, um, you know, the feasibility and the environmental survey. Um, because it, it, what it is, is just some bird that lives in the trees. You, you know what I mean? Something like that. And so you could, oh, I can only build on like a quarter of an acre outright. And I could buy, but I could buy mitigation credits, I was told, to do more. Like maybe up to a half an acre or a full acre um, potentially. Um, and, you know, of course, I have all of the stuff I got going on with Airbnbs. I just kind of put it on the back burner. But now you kind of got my mind going. I'm like. Ooh, that would be an interesting um, project to do and build a nice little investment property and sell it and, you know, make it really it, nice. It's something that, you know, that, that would be classified like as um, Airbnb is more like a tactic, yeah. you know, where this is a project, mm. right? So you could be looking at, you know, six months of like getting um, your footprint of zoning, 
in right. place so that you get a viable project. You know, another thing, too, that gets me is people that are afraid of putting skin in the game. Um, yeah, oh, I'll get God, lots yeah. of people that, you know, oh, I want loans. And then when they have to PG them, they're out all of a sudden. And it's just like, w w you don't believe in this? And I'm not saying that every single thing has to have a personal guarantee. But a lot of times when you first get started, they're going to want you to sign your name and it's not on your personal credit report. They're just saying, OK, you you have a house or you have a this and I, I want you to have some skin in the game. And so w what's the deal with that? How, are you finding that to be kind of the case, too? Yeah, because um, I'm, you know, my my where I don't want to chase somebody down. I want them to figure out the problem. Yeah. If they don't PG it, then I know I don't have them on the hook. Right. Um, if there is a problem on that property, I don't want them handing it back to me. Right. Right. So, like, I want them to personally be responsible yeah. to take care of, like, and <laughs> we're putting up the money. Right. Have, like, right. It, it's I literally, I'll have people, I need money, I need money, and I'll give them the bank. And there's, and they'll, oh, they approved me for 50000 You know, and I'm just using a small number. And they're like, oh, but they want me to PG it. And I'm like, okay. They're just asking you for your, to you to sign your name and check your personal credit. They're not going to put it on your personal credit report unless you default. And I'll explain these things. And it's just like this. Do you really, all, all I have, all I'll say is I just ask this question every time. Do you believe in your business? Yeah. I, and what's funny is I'll, I'll sit with, you know, before when I wasn't, when I wasn't the bank, yeah. um, it, you know, I would sit with the bankers cause I'm, I've been an underwriter since 2012. Like yeah. I've done every job, right. Develop. Yeah. I was a contractor. So I built my own projects. I developed my own projects. I underwrote my own deals. Yeah. Um, so, and part of I didn't want to, I would yeah. love it if I just had come across a bunch of competent people. <laughs> but the problem is, you know, people would say that it couldn't get funded <laughs> and I, I could get it funded. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you, it's, it's funny. Like if you walk, yeah. if you walk into Wells Fargo and I don't yep. mean to throw somebody under the bus, Wells Fargo, um, and you apply for an SBA loan or even worse, if you go into a uh, U.S. bank, their okay. box of lending is like, like this big, right? right? I think I just messed up my camera. So <laughs> their box is small. Right. right? Yeah. It, it, it's small. Yeah. And the SBA box is huge. I think my camera's on this remote kind of thing. Yeah, it's so, kind of like zooming in and out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if I hand gesture this way. So this is the SBA box, yeah. right? Yeah. I can throw all kinds of stuff in there. I just messed up my camera again. And then here is the, here, here is the U.S. bank box. Yeah. So you have to fit in the U.S. bank box before you can get to the SBA box. Right. 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 And I'm like, there's a, there's a QSO that'll fund that SBA deal tomorrow. Sorry about the whole hand gesture stuff. There's a QSO that will, that will fund that in a heartbeat. Yeah. And as long, you know, you fit the box. Yeah. And I'll, I'll take lots of people that have been denied. And I think that's the worst thing. Like I never, ever, when it comes to turning anybody down, don't give them a way to go. Right. Like, go yeah. handle your credit and come back in about three or four months. Right. Right? Go yep. open up some business accounts and mm -hmm. move all your debt to a business credit card at 0% interest. Right. Like, get that off your personal credit. Right. Right? Yeah. So you yep. got zero. I mean, my, my personal credit, I'll show it to you. I'll show you my personal credit. <laughs> what do you think my credit score is? 811. 811. It's my guess. Jeff, put in the comments down below what you think my credit score is. Put in the comments below what you think Andrew's credit score is. That was my guess. 811. 811? Yeah. 850. Ah. Awesome. Awesome. Right? Awesome. awesome. So, I'm a little jealous. I was in the 800s and I've been applying for a few things and they told me it was a 740. But I was like, ah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you know, you've got to take hits when you're, when you're, you're going to get some inquiries. They'll drop yep. off in two years. They will. Exactly. And I'll be back in the eights again. You, you also need to strategize on when you do and how many cards you get. Like you want to get like several cards from one bank that pulls one inquiry, you right. know, so you're not like, I have 32 credit cards. Um, yeah. I have credit cards on entities I sold a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, $100,000 credit card. It was funny. I just that. started that where I'm getting multiple credit cards in multiple businesses and, and yeah. kind of doing that whole thing. And 
I, and it's just you're right. There's so many great ways out there. But you said an, another great thing about that in that about finding people that are kind of in it for the long term and saying, OK, I'm, I'm yeah. kind of committed to this business. I think that's another thing um, that we really could talk about. And we'd be here all day. But picking kind of uh, yes, you can start multiple businesses. But at some point, um, if you want something to work, especially if this is your business that you're running, you can't just be dabbling in every little thing that comes along every new opportunity. And I feel like so many people are just so discombobulated with what they actually want to do that they're never able to get any traction in, in the thing. So I feel like that, I, that's another part to it. So, yeah, I call it like the shiny object syndrome. Yep. yep. Right. It's like the new ADD starting yeah. a new business every other week. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, like well, call those want panures. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, you know, and then I have a video I did. It's like uh want panures. Then you have pose panures. I mm. see a lot of those on YouTube. They're yes. posing to be entrepreneurs, but they're not right. entrepreneurs. They got on right. their social media. Yep. They got lifestyle video. I'm like, right. That ain't, yeah. that ain't an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like right. I, right. I, I've, I've been through the bloodbath of entrepreneurship. That ain't yeah. it. Right. You know, uh, so, but okay. I mean, that's what sells. People want to yeah. believe that. Right. But like, literally, if you don't, if you, to me, if you're not interested, passionately interested in what you're doing, it's going to be hard to push through the tough times because right. I'll, I'll work for a year. I've worked for four years, losing $50,000 a month. Yeah. And I, I'll put that up against anybody. Do yeah. you have the heart to work for four years? Yeah, man. $50,000 a month. Yeah, man. Dig yourself out of a hole that is $12.8 million deep. Oof. Right? And pay everyone back. Yes. Right? Sit at yeah. a coffee shop, April 12th, 2012. And know that that you paid twelve point eight million dollars. You lost fifty thousand a month for four years, yeah. and you went to work every day with a smile on your face. Yeah, never lowered the pay of my employees. Took care of everybody who took care of me. Yeah, and lived on thirty two credit cards for four years. Wow, that's impressive. That is impressive. I can definitely say I don't. I don't have that. I have lost money month after month after month in some things. I'm definitely going through some of the scrapes with some of the properties and things and things that I have done as well. But me and you share a really great past with the underwriting. So that was kind of what I did in my old world. And of course, I did everything in mortgage banking from processing to loan officer um, to underwriter and vice president and some of those things. But you mentioned a great point that I think that really why your content stands out is because you are underwriter, you do know what the bank is kind of looking for. So when we're talking about getting that funding. Um, what stops a lot of people, and, and I'm going to even say this very specifically to black women, is they ask, they, they give you conditions sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, where they're like, show me this document or write a letter of inquiry for this or what's this right here? And it just freezes people for some reason, instead of just giving them the document that they're asking for and pushing past some of those things to get to the other side of the approval. Because you do have to realize that is how banks make money by approving loans, not declining loans. So in many cases, we, we do not want to deny right. anything. We're yeah. trying to find a way to trying say to yes. Find a way to say yes. So yes. don't stop when the bank or the underwriter ask you for something. You know, you, you, made, you had a great point, like knowing how to give them what they're asking for. And sometimes maybe you don't have the exact document that they said, but there's another document that fulfills what they're trying to see or whatever, or what's this large deposit, or, you know, I saw you took a loss on this line right here. And just explaining sometimes, in, in many cases, it's just an explanation that they're asking for. They're not even necessarily telling you you have to do anything, just explain what it is and it'll stop somebody from going forward so they never get that funding and and, and i think you have a, a a lot to teach about um when it comes to pushing past that point you know what i mean oh and i, I think you know who cares right like <laughs> that 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 that's what i don't understand and most of the items yeah are for the for the file that no one's going to look at right like, <laughs> like for example, I'm, I'll ask people like we're we're trying to like we got a four million dollar deal. We're trying to close it, and they, I can't get a freaking business plan out of somebody. Yeah, I, I can't, like 
I, you know, with my own hands, I've touched over 77,000 loans that I've yeah. processed myself. Yeah. Right. From, from assets, from cars to real estate to businesses, like every aspect underwritten. And spun, I love spending paper. It's just yeah. fun. Yeah. But I, I'm like, well, what, what difference does it make? It's just for the file. Like, right. I don't, now you're making me care. Yeah. Like, I didn't care before, but now I think you got something to hide. Right. Uh, and that know, part, and that I, part. The, like, all of a sudden, you're giving all kind of attention. Yeah. To like something that ultimately they're like, oh, I need this for the file. Nobody yeah. reads your stuff. Right. Nobody no one cares, cares what your was actually in the operating gr agreement, for example, or, yeah. you know, why this address is there or what this large deposit, as long as it's like not a loan is really no. sometimes all they're asking for. Um, and even if it is a loan, in some cases, that still doesn't matter. They're just going to say, well, show me the note. Um, and, and that still yeah, doesn't yeah, stop the approval. So it, it's it's amazing to me. How many people don't understand the thought processor of an underwriter and that many, like you said, is this many of the things they're asking for is just for the file. I, I gave up um, like a long time ago. Like I have no ego. I like I gave I gave that up. That was too yeah. expensive. I just <laughs> I hand I hand this stuff over. What what would you like? You know, right. we're partners. You want to get to know me. I'm going to hand it to you. Oh, in regards to those business uh, plans. Yeah, I. I had to, I have written business plans for almost every one of my loans because I couldn't get a business plan out of the owner. Do you yeah. know that th none of the banks ever read the business plan? Yeah. They just wanted to see that you actually gave some thought right. to the idea of being successful in your business. Like yep. you got a plan. Like yep. who wants to, who wants to lend to somebody who doesn't have a plan? I, exactly. Like, Exactly. Uh, who would know, want to lend to someone who does not have a plan and, ha and, and, and hasn't thought about it in any way, shape or form either. That's another thing that's super crazy to me. Um, so I'm the one making up the business plan. I know nothing about the business where right. I'm like, here are the, here's their, their SWOT analysis. Here's their competitive analysis. Here's their target. Here's their pricing strategy, yeah. you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll look at the background of the owner and I'm I, you know, like, okay, the owner has been a business, this business for blah, 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 blah. They're just, and it's like, and now with chat GPT, I got business yeah. plans completely done as many pages as I want in less than like 10 seconds. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm right. Like, I'm exactly. Exactly. And that's another thing even, and you put, you talked about that too. And I, and I think we both have similar content around how to use chat GPT to help you fill out these grant applications when they're asking you for a personal statement or a blog, uh, like you said, a business plan or this, the, that it's right in chat GPT to help you. It's funny. I felt compelled to share my credit, my credit score too, just because you showed yours. Ah, oh, there you go. And I told you, and you, and you well, I said I ate 11 because that's what mine was. And then, like let, I said, let I've me been just try to you, your, your score right now I'm is sad. at the top, the top <laughs> tier. No, like you're at the top <laughs> tier. 740 and above is the top tier um, that I lend the most money to. Okay. Like with some experience, I, like I'll lend you all the money that is, is available. Okay. So you, you are in the top tier status as far as it if you had eight eleven it wouldn't change how much money I could give you or what your interest rate would be. The difference really? between seven forty and eight fifty is, is just thing. ego. It's just okay. pride. and you it's did say that. Activity. I gotta get rid of the ego because I was just it's like just, hurt when it dropped down. And again I was like I'm gonna just consolidate some of these things and I gotta get this off and you like you said ego. Yeah. It's just oh, pride. It's pride messing with you. It is. It it's is. Pride, you know? So, so like literally, like I, you get all the money. Like yeah. Oprah, you get it. You get the car. You, you get, get a car, car. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm really disappointed. I did a, I did a video yesterday on 15 different jobs where you get a free house. Really? Uh, I'm gonna pay 50 to $150,000. I'm so bummed because it like didn't do that well. Yeah. And I'm like, this is a free house. Like the yeah. first. You know, I got into real estate. You know why? Tell me why. So I was playing, I bought cash flow when I was a kid. Robert mm -hmm. Kiyosaki's game. It was $200. That's right. Yep. Yep. You know? And I got a balance sheet and income statement, which was awesome because I took yep. four years of accounting. So I was mm -hmm. very like astute on like, I know this stuff. Yeah. But to be able to play with incomes and, and expenses to where you break out and are free. Yeah. And you're actually financially free. It was 
so good to play that game over and over and over again because it reprogrammed my brain right. about how to think, right? Yeah. Now I have over 72 income streams. Wow. Right? Like I can go into a coma right now and I, I just got into a bike accident. Uh, I do Ironmans. So, oh, wow. you know, like literally if I go into a coma and I come out because of my medical yeah. insurance, I'll be yeah. wealthier. Wow. Because of my income streams. Right. Right. Because I'll eat less food that the hospital will pay for my food. The insurance will pay right. for my food. Right. Yep. They'll give me housing, the whole bit. So literally <laughs> I'll come out wealthier.